We're constantly trying to build positivity on top of rage. And that juxtaposition creates so much shame. And there's so many ways that shame is created and developed. But to me, like in the chronic illness conversation, that is one of the greatest seeds of shame. Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 31 of the Healthy Skin Show. Today, we're going to talk about how you can actually learn to thrive with a chronic skin condition, even though you might not always be happy about it. And to be fair, I know I certainly wasn't happy about it. And today's guest is going to underscore why it's so important to keep your head on straight, especially with so much stuff that you can read online that can mislead you into believing that you've just got to grin and bear it and be positive and happy all of the time. Now, before we dive into that conversation, because it is a significant one, I just wanted to say thank you to Julie Gab, who shared on iTunes that the podcast is super helpful and has clear information. And she states, I've only been listening for a short time, but so far I am very impressed with Jennifer and the way she interacts with her guests and presents information about all kinds of skin issues, especially eczema. I've learned a lot and am a new fan. Well, thank you, Julie. I really appreciate you sticking around and I hope that you continue to learn from the episodes that you get a chance to listen to. I really appreciate the time that you took to share your thoughts. And for those of you listening who haven't done so yet, please take a moment, head on over to iTunes if you use iTunes and leave us a review. It means a ton of gratitude from me to you because it shows that what we are doing is important, it's valuable, and we're continuing to push forward and getting the message out there. Now, today's episode is something quite different. We delved into the whole emotional trauma aspect a few episodes ago with Dr. Keisha Ewers. And I hope that you guys listened to it because to be honest with you, that was out of like 200 some interviews that I have conducted over the years, that was the first time that I was literally on the verge of crying as she's explaining and going through the story of the client that she was working with. It really hit home for me. And, you know, it helped me see that I still also have work to do in that arena. And today's guest, I think, is another great opportunity for us to have this unfolding conversation that you don't have to just pretend like everything's okay. A lot of times we see people online and they're all about this, like being positive and super positive. Everything, you know, happens for a reason and it's going to work out. And you know what? You don't always feel like that when you're in the middle of a flare or your skin rashes won't stop and you can't sleep at night. And I just wanted to give you permission as you listen to today's interview to know It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be frustrated or angry or sad or any number of what we consider to be negative emotions. And you know what? Those emotions are just as valid and as important as the positive ones that we oftentimes want to put on a happy face and wear on the outside while we feel like on the inside, we're really struggling. And there is a movement. I did not coin this term. And I've heard it a few times. And I think my guest today, Nikita Chopra, really brings that to light is this concept of toxic positivity. And I was actually watching my friend, Dr. Jolene Brighton, who also was a guest on the Healthy Skin Show earlier. I think she was episode number four. She talked today about how when she discusses things with her patients about how they're feeling, she said, it's okay to feel how you feel. It's okay to be present to whatever the emotional state you are in, whether you're angry, you're sad, you want to cry, it's fine. In fact, it's good to feel those emotions. Feel them, move through them, be with them. Just don't get stuck in them. That's the problem is when we get stuck in those negative emotions and we can't seem to move forward. But using this false sense of positivity to hide what's happening underneath. 
so that we don't have to deal with it or trying to believe or hold on to this notion that is perpetuated, especially on social media, that if you're just positive all the time, you're going to be happy regardless of all the awful things that are going on right now. That's not exactly fair to you. It's not fair to your emotional health, and it's not fair to your stress levels as you are going through what is honestly a very hellish landscape. It seems like there's never any end to the suffering that you can experience on so many different levels. And it's difficult oftentimes for people who haven't really gone through that process to fully understand that it's not just the scratching and the itching and the redness, but it's how you have difficulty showing up in life being the you that you know you are because you don't feel well, you don't look well, people stare, they make comments, you're not as productive, you spend a ton of money trying all of these different things that your doctor sort of throws at you, almost like throwing darts in the dark, with a hope and a prayer, wishing that something, something, somewhere will work. You go through all of this being told, well, you know, everything happens for a reason. You just got to go through it. It'll work out in the end. And you know, it can be really, really tough when you're in the middle of that, for that to be remotely helpful. And that's why I am so grateful to have Nitika Chopra joining us today to talk about not just her experience living and thriving with both psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, and not just sharing her story, but also her perspective in this many year journey of hers, of how she's come to view with skepticism, the notion that everything's got to be positive all of the time and that you are not allowed or entitled to feel the negative emotions that you have within you so that you can better process them and not get stuck within them. Without further ado, let's jump into that conversation. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Healthy Skin Show. Today, I've got a very special guest with you. For those of you who tuned into the Eczema and Psoriasis Awareness Week, you will remember this guest. She talked a lot about her personal experience, and I think that that's very helpful when you're in the middle of things and life just really feels pretty crappy, so to speak. You don't feel very positive. And one of the reasons that I wanted to bring her on the show is because she's actually one of the most positive people I know. And I love watching her on Instagram and and paying attention to the things that she does. And I thought, why not connect you with her, especially if you're in need of inspiration and some upliftment and just whatever it is that you need to kind of turn the day around. I think she is an excellent resource for you. Now, known for her straightforward tone and intense vulnerability, Nitika Chopra has been a leader in the wellness industry since she founded her blog in 2010 as the host of the talk show Naturally Beautiful on Z Living and as the on-air expert for Fresh on QVC. Nitika has always empowered women to use beauty as a tangible access point to self-love. Known for her straightforward tone and intense vulnerability, Nitika recently took everything she learned from suffering with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis for the past 27 years and created a conversation about self-love in the chronic illness community. Nitika shares honest experiences every week on her blog so that she can spark transformative reflection and truth in her readers. And you can also find her discussing these topics on her weekly podcast called The Point of Pain, which is really great, by the way, as well as daily inspiration over on Instagram. You can check her out at at Nitika Chopra. So Nitika, I just, A, want to welcome you so much to the podcast. This is such an honor to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm so pumped. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now... You know, the reason that I was inspired to reach out to you was because as I'm watching you every day, it was pretty recently, you shared these really deeply personal photos of yourself that I, I'll be honest, when I had eczema all over my hands, I didn't want to show anybody my eczema. And (laughs) I'm not saying it was easy. I would imagine it was pretty hard. How did it feel to like 
put this very personal journey that a lot of times, I mean, I know I felt a lot of shame when I was going through it, and I'm sure you can speak to that. But how did it feel just being like, here you go, world? Yeah, I resonate with everything that you're saying. I definitely have felt shame and felt like I never wanted anyone to see those things. There's like so many barriers, you know, emotional, even intimacy with having that kind of a condition all over your body. But for me, it always was really just, I don't know, when I was really young, I, when I got diagnosed, I was 10 years old. And a few years into that diagnosis, maybe, maybe four or five years, I hit a, one of my many rock bottoms throughout the journey. And to be very candid, it was a moment where I was like 15 years old and I was at my wits end and I felt like I didn't want to be there anymore. I didn't want to be alive anymore. And I never was the person who would actually do anything about that, but I was really close to God and I really believed in God. So I was praying for God to take me away because my skin and everything that compounded with my health was just so intense. I didn't know how to handle it. And the message that I heard, because I've always been so connected to God, I just heard this message that wasn't from me, that was like from somewhere way deep into like the ethers, I felt like. It said, this isn't about you. And I was like, I'm sorry, um, I'm the one who is going <laughs> through all of this craziness and I'm the one who's like in so much pain. What are you talking about that's not about me? And it honestly took me a long time to like sit with that message and have it evolve over time. It showed up in different ways throughout my life. And I didn't totally understand it when I heard it, but I knew it was the truth. That was the only thing I knew, right? So when I had like my darkest, darkest, darkest moments, I felt like that was the one thing that I knew for sure. So, okay, if that's supposedly true in like, literally I would be in pain and be like, okay, if this is like not about me, then I'm like, what does this mean? Or, you know, try to support myself in that way. So getting back to the pictures and spe like specifically, I've been locking those pictures up in a closet for like 17 years. You know, I took those pictures when I was 20. I never wanted to show those pictures. And at the same time, there was a part of me that knew someone was going to need to see them at some point, that someone was going to need to see that, like, this is the amount of pain that I was in for, like, you know, two decades of my life, and I'm okay, and you'll be okay, too. Not I'm healed, not everything's perfect, not something happened overnight, but, like, I'm okay, and I'm actually thriving, and you can have that, too. Maybe it'll take you twice as long. Maybe it'll take you half as long. Maybe it'll take you 10 different steps or all the same steps. I don't know. I'm not, I'm a patient. I'm not a guru of any kind. And I always try to say that, but I just, something in me knew that someone was going to need to see them. So when I shared those images, I just felt like it's not about you. It was hard. I was sad. I was uncomfortable. It was there was a lot of grief that came up in sharing them. I felt for that girl in those pictures who was like in so much pain and trying to be happy at the same time and like fighting for her happiness. And I knew it wasn't about me. Can we talk a little bit about the, just the shame piece? Like if you go back to that girl, you know, in that moment where you're really suffering, you know, and this is pretty intense and I appreciate you for being so vulnerable and sharing that these thoughts have passed through you, through your experience. And that's not something people oftentimes want to acknowledge. And it's also somewhat liberating to hear somebody say, you know, I admit it, this is what my truth is, and can really allow somebody else to be honest with themselves, which I guess is the whole point of your podcast and, and your website. But how did it feel when you were at your worst and you're walking through life and you just want, I don't know. I just wanted to hide. Did you feel that way? Oh yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I, I was always battling it in some ways, right? Like one part of me, I came out of my mother's body just being like the total opposite of what every Indian girl is supposed to be like, like there's this word in Hindi, which I now say to all of my closest friends, cause they're all this word, which is pataki, which is just like firecracker. 
And my mom has been calling me a firecracker since I was born, basically, you know, so like in the Indian culture, just from the super stereotypical, you know, idea that you could have of it, it's like you're supposed to be demure and you're supposed to be, I mean, even my hair is too wild for like what the Indian culture is supposed to be. Right. So I've just always been that way and always felt like this deep desire to fully self-express and be self-expressed. And then there's this other part of me that was like, I'll also felt a lot of hurt and rejection, whether it was from my body or just from being so different. So it was like constantly this shame of like, wait, but I want to go like this. But like every time I do, I get hurt. So I need to go like, you know, like, and I think that is the expanding and the contracting that a lot of us experience, whether it's through psoriasis and eczema or it's through relationships or it's through not knowing, you know, how to read as well as other kids in class, but you want to learn. I mean, it can be in the slightest ways. But yeah, I felt a lot of shame and I felt that battle a lot. From that point to where you are today, where like, you're just like, it's not like you're letting it all hang out. I don't think that's the right way to to phrase it. But you, you share your life, you share this sense of joy that permeates it. And yeah, there are moments where, you know, you're like, I'm really tired. (laughs) I'm not feeling great today. Because no no day is 100% sunshine and rainbows. But how do you for somebody who's listening to this and they're really still in the thick of it, they're that girl, you know, 15, 20 years ago. How do you make that shift or what little baby steps did you make or that you encourage your tribe to take in order to find joy and flip that? It's almost like kind of flipping a mindset switch of how you look at things. I had this question similarly asked to me by a woman in an audience of a event that I was speaking at recently. And she was like, you know, I'm trying all the things and I'm doing all the things that the wellness industry tells me that I need to do. And I'm like applying all the things and I'm taking all the things and I'm saying all the things, just like I'm doing everything. But she was just diagnosed with chronic Lyme. And she's like, the reality is that there's some days like I can't move and I can't get out of bed. And I'm like trying to say an affirmation, but like it's not working. So she asked me, like, what do you do when you're really in that devastating place? And I just looked at her and I was like, you're allowed to be angry. And I feel like if someone had just told me that like 25 years ago, my whole life would have been different because we're constantly trying to build positivity on top of rage. And that juxtaposition creates so much shame. And there's so many ways that shame is created and developed. But to me, like in the chronic illness conversation, that is one of the greatest seeds of shame. Like you are diagnosed with something, you're furious because your body is not acting at all the way that whether it's like your sister or your best friend or your mom, like all their bodies seem to be or how your body's always been. And you're furious about it because it's devastating and it feels like a betrayal And everyone in this wellness industry, which I say in quotes because I have so many feelings about it, is telling you just to be positive. And to me, that just makes me more angry. But what it did when I didn't know like more about these different layers, it made me be so toxic with myself in trying to force an outcome of positivity on top of rage and heartbreak. You know, so like if someone had just said to me, girl, you just go be pissed for like two years or, you know, go be angry (laughs) for like whatever you got to do, just get it out of your system. I would have, I think, found my way to peace and calm and connection and a little bit more clarity, probably much, much sooner. But we're constantly fighting that. So I would say the first thing would be it starts with rage. Like it just starts with rage. Like don't be afraid of your rage. Don't be afraid of the fact that you're devastated underneath what has just occurred to your body. And that doesn't mean that you're negative. That doesn't mean you're going to stay there. That doesn't mean that you failed. It's just being honest, right? And then from there, I mean, there's all kinds of tips. I mean, you can follow, you know, me on social media or you can follow you on social media. You can do, you know, there's like so many tips that depends on what resonates with you. But I know for me, because my condition was so skin related it was being psoriasis, like skincare and beauty really was like a really interesting access point to me because 
I felt like I never looked at skincare as anything but like a means to an end. Like I just need the tub of shea butter or like the vitamin D oil or like whatever it is just to like put all over my skin and like wrap myself up in sweatpants or do whatever I have to do just to get to like not being in pain. I never thought about actually luxuriating and like a really nice body oil or taking a nice bath or, you know, because it was just like trauma upon trauma with my skin. But there are little moments in that when I started to look at skincare, like my face wasn't, there were years where it was affected, but there were also a lot of years where it was okay. It was better. So I could like try out new face masks or I could try, you know, just to connect to my actual skin in a way. It's like not even about what it looks like or anything. So that's kind of the first like baby step that I always think, you know, like after you, the big step is like dealing with your rage and your anger and heartbreak. And then you can start layering in like a green juice and, you know, an affirmation and a face mask and everything. But it's not really about that stuff. It's really about getting to the truth. Yeah. And actually, I just want to thank you very much for bringing that to the table because I didn't even think about that. And it's true. Like when I was there, I was so angry, but then trying to show up and be positive and put on a happy face and you go home and you're a super depleted, really exhausted. And then you, (laughs) it probably wasn't very pleasant to be around. And I was also angry and I felt like my life was being stolen away from me by this condition that I couldn't control. And I think the, the brilliance and what you're sharing is that you're offering people an opportunity to meet themselves where they are and that it's okay to do that and be that. And that's a really beautiful lesson that I think everyone listening can take from that. And just so everyone knows, I mean, you still struggle today with your conditions, correct? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel like a struggle as much as it used to, but it's definitely a journey. Like I get so many messages on Instagram saying like, how did you heal? And I I sometimes take weeks to respond to them because I'm just like, I didn't heal. Like, I don't know why, just because like, I don't look the way I did in those pictures 17 years ago. doesn't mean that I'm like healed. And to be honest with you, I don't even like the word heal. I really don't because I think it's a, it makes it about the destination and not about the journey. And like, I think we've learned enough to know that it's like really not about the destination. And I just feel like I'm always healing. I'm always like, to me, healing is just about alignment. Like whether it's my mind, my body or my soul, it's just about that alignment. So I'm constantly realigning myself throughout every moment of the day. You know, and sometimes I'll go weeks without being, well, not weeks so much anymore, but some, I used to go weeks or months even without being aligned and out without being, you know, in line with my truth. And then I'll realize it and I'll work my way back. And that to me is what healing really is. So yeah, I still have psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. It doesn't run my life the way that it used to at all, but it's still there. I still see the doctors and take the medications when I need to and, you know, eat certain foods because I want to for my health and try to drink lots of water and get lots of sleep and, you know, live a pretty conscious autoimmune lifestyle. (laughs) But it doesn't necessarily have to, I think when we get stuck, it's like, we're like, is this what my life's going to be like? And you're like, this is what my life is like. I get to do these things. I get to have these amazing experiences. And I just want to thank you. You have really shifted the conversation, I think, in a direction that this podcast hasn't had a chance to go. And I think for those of you who this conversation is really resonating with, I would love to encourage you to go listen to Nitika's podcast because I think this is where you're unpacking it even further. Yeah, we get like really intensely deep in like every episode. (laughs) My editor's always like, do you realize you go over the time that you're supposed to do this every time? (laughs) Like, sorry. Yeah, they're like long episodes, but yeah. But they're deep. They're full of information. They're also thought provoking in some respects. They're very heart provoking. It gets you in that element of like, wow, there's, there's shifts possible. There's mindset shifts that I could change. Maybe I could look at something from a different perspective and angle and see the positivity there or the benefit that I could bring into my own life. So I think that'd be a great opportunity for all of you to check out her podcast. And then you can also visit 
Nitika over at nitikachopra.com. I'm going to put all of the links in the show notes. So if you're listening in the car or whatever, you can easily find everything here as well as her Instagram handle. And if you go over to her website, she's got a great newsletter, number one, but she's got a video webinar and she's going to share with you some of her top three ways to thrive when you have a chronic illness, which I think is really important to think about thriving. I like that idea of like thrive rather than focus so heavily on healing because We only have the now. We don't really know what we're going to have a month or two months or a year from now. And the now is all we really have. So Nitika, thank you so much for joining us in this conversation. I deeply appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure. I really, truly hope that today's conversation gives you a different perspective on how you view what you experience from an emotional standpoint going through all of this. As Nitika shared, she's not at the end of her journey. She's still trying things. She's still adjusting her protocols. She's still going through the process, but it hasn't slowed her down one bit. And that's why I love and admire her and all of her courage and the things that she does and puts out there. And with that said, I just want to take a moment and thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the podcast leave a review, rate it on whatever platform you listen to and make sure share the podcast with a friend, someone who needs it, someone who could use this type of inspiration and hope that they don't have right now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.